going to show you um, going to show you three examples again. Uh, the first one is one that you already know how to do. So let's have a look at something like this. Again, this is something that in extension one context you get a clue for, but you guys don't have a clue for this anymore. The equivalent rule of sine squared x. What could I do with this thing? Okay, what identities can I use that will help me? Yeah. Um, so I'm cos two x. Yeah, fantastic. So you can write this off on the side if you want, just to help you work out what on earth is going on. Cos two x has cos squared and sine squared in it, which of course means you can interchange between those two as you want. So if I write cos squared x minus sine squared x over here. I want the form that only has sine squares in it, right? So I'm going to replace this guy with one minus, one minus sine squared. So I'm going to get one minus two sine squared over here. And you can see here, just by a simple rearrangement, that what I'm going to get over here is the integral of a half times what? One minus cos two. One minus cos two. These guys are basically swapping places, yeah? 1 minus cos 2x. Happy with that? So this is not too dramatic. Can someone tell me what the primitive function is going to be? Yes. Minus half sine 2x. Okay, just momentarily check. Once you've got your constant, that, that does check out. Differentiate it in your head. Is it going to work out? Yeah, because the inside derivative is going to cancel with the half. Sine turns into normal cosine. The sines are preserved. Plus or minus is preserved. Looks good. Okay. So that was the first example. A second example is to say, well, what happens if instead of this guy by himself, what if I have something like this? What difference does it make to have that cosine there in the pipe? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to think about substitution. Okay, now again, as an extension one student, I've seen these before. Now I'm becoming more familiar. This is in the form f dash, and this is f of x squared. Do you see that? It's sine x all squared. So if I want to make it really clear in my mind, I mean, there's no boundary values to worry about. So I could say over here, let u equal what substitution would I be do? Sin Just regular sine x. So therefore, du on dx is equal to. Okay, so because I've chosen a nice simple example, it's all there, sitting there for you. So I'll put my equal sign down here. The cos x, I'm just going to do a straight substitution for d or dx, right? Like so. There it is. That's not sin x, it's sin x all squared. So this is going to become, when I substitute it, u squared. And then I've got my dx still hanging there, right? So cancel, cancel. And this is a very simple one. So what does this become? Yep. Plus my constant, and then I just need to climb back and undo my substitution. Okay, now, these you've seen before, okay? I'm now going to push further into extension 2 land, which is that, like, you guys pretty much immediately jumped in this because you recognized it, okay? You can see as well, if I had something like, don't write this down. If I had something like this, even though it's a bit like oh, gross, okay, this is not that difficult to deal with, right? What would I do in this case? What could I do? Yeah, I'm kind of just going to have to do it twice, right? Like this is going to be, take a breath, uh, this is going to be uh, a half 1 minus cos 2x. That's sine squared, what I just wrote down. And then you just square it again, okay? So then you're going to have another cos squared. You're going to have to deal with that, but that's okay. Any even number of powers, if I, heaven forbid, I got six, that's when you're going to have to look at these guys, okay? In principle, I can deal with them. The question just gets longer. It doesn't need any new skills, right? Okay, but what if, example three. What if the power is not something nice and neat? This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. So how am I going to deal with something like this? Okay, yeah. You can split it into sine x times sine squared x. And then you can make it into a cos using the identity. Okay, so this doesn't get us out of the woods, I will point out. If you have a look at this, right? Okay, I can deal with this part. I've got some tools here. 
But how do I deal with the other part? How do I deal with it in summary? I'm going to need both of these pieces together. I'm going to pause for a minute. Let you see if you can get a bit of a head start on me. How are you going to work with this? Right. Enough of you have shown me. I know some people are still working, but we can carry this two together. What substitution am I going to make? What identity will I use? Same. I'm going to use, uh, where have I got it? Um, in fact, I haven't really written it here. But like this side square here, I'm kind of going to use the Pythagorean identity that's sort of behind here that I used in, at that point there. So I'm going to write this as sine x times 1 minus cos squared. Okay. Now, why is this more useful then? Like I showed you, I showed you this substitution before, but this is going to give you, excuse me, this is going to give you a dead end, right? I want to avoid this. Why? What problem is this going to leave me with? Yeah, that cos 2x is a problem, right? The cos 2x is an issue because it's multiplied by sine x. Sine x is not the derivative of cos 2x, is it? Right? So I don't want to use that. I want to stay with just single x's, which is why I use the regular Pythagorean identity. So what happens here? I'm integrating now sine x take away sine x cos squared x. But this looks just like my second example, does it not? I mean, it's slightly stitched around, OK? So I'm going to integrate. What am I going to get from sine x? Maybe cos x. Now, we're getting to this point where do I need to do this substitution on the side? Can I do this in my head? If I had cos squared x, it must have come from cos cubed x, right? So if I had a cos cubed x here, what would happen if I differentiated cos cubed x? Okay, so what would happen is I would do the derivative of the inside, which would become minus sine. That's perfect. That's what I want. But then I have to do the outside. So what would happen there? This, this 3 would become a 3 out the front here. And I don't have a 3 there, so how do I compensate? Yeah, I'm going to divide by 3, right? So this 3 that comes out the front will cancel, leaving me with a coefficient of 1. How about the sign, the plus or the minus? I want the plus, don't I? Okay, because remember, the inside derivative was minus sign, which is exactly what I already have. Okay? And then my constant. Does that make sense? Yeah. I did it a different way. Did you get, did you end up? What? Or uh, somewhere else. I did like the I used the one minus cos two theta on two equals sine square theta, mm -hmm. and then in order to get sine, I just square rooted that identity. So you had this is a half uh, one minus yeah. one minus cos two theta. Yeah, and okay. then when I did to find the sine, I basically times that by the square root of the second identity. Because sine, if sine. How did you like, integrate that? <laughs> Because then what you do is you can take like 1 on 2 out and 1 on root 2 out and then you've got 1 minus cos 2 theta times square root 1 minus oh, okay. cos 2 theta. I see where you've gone. Yeah. All and right. then you get 3 on 2 and then you can go 5 on 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are some problems with the way you've gone through this. Number okay. one, it's going to end up being very long. Like I, I, you've probably seen, uh-oh, it's become a bit messier. Yeah. Secondly, by having to introduce these guys, we've seen before in an extension one context, like, oh, I don't want, I don't want okay. to if I can avoid it, right? And I clearly can. Like this is true for all values of x. I don't have to worry about positives or negatives or what have you. So I think this is clearly a better part. I just need to. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. No, 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 you see. 